Our Lady of Fatima said that the final battle will be fought, the battle of good and will be fought in families. And how true it is, whilst all the other messages of Our Lady of Fatima are coming to pass, this too is. Where families over the years because of the many commitments they have, spend less and less time with each other. And therefore relationships in families have broken down over the years because of their many commitments at work, spouses have such little time for each other. Because parents are so busy making commitments to to look after things at home, pay mortgages and do this and that and the other. They're spending less time with their families. And if they're spending time with their children, it is on the basketball court or the soccer court or near the swimming pool or some music lesson or the tennis court. So, Families over the years, relationships have become so fragile. In some ways, this lockdown has been a blessing for families where there is no sporting activity, there is no overtime at work, you're working from home and you get to spend time with the family. Now this time for many people have been more distressing than anything else because all this while they were happily distracted by work and by other commitments now that they're living in the same house and unable to go out it's more stressful. It simply shows how poorly our family life has been over the years. So when our physical relationships have been strained and stressed and come to breaking point and now that all together is more frustrating can you imagine our spiritual life how it's been because of the busyness that we've caught up us caught up in we find very little time or no time at all to pray together as spouses or to pray together as a family a family that prays together stays together. We know that, we've heard it said many a time. It is so important that we pray together. There's a story told about our Blessed Mother on her travels to Jerusalem. As a faithful Jewish woman, she would travel with Joseph, you know, even before Joseph, every year to Jerusalem to participate in the feasts and this one year when Mary was traveling to Jerusalem she met a mother who was in distress and this mother was so distraught and Mary being the woman she always is concerned about her neighbor asked the woman why she was in tears and this woman shared with Mary she said that her son who is so young is living a very scandalous life he's become a thief in his young age she doesn't know what's going to happen of him and she doesn't want her soul to be lost and she's so worried about him and Mary, being the woman she always is, says to her, Do not worry, I will pray for him. And the story is told then, on the cross, when Jesus was dying, there were two thieves, two criminals, who were crucified for the wrong they had done. But only one turned to Jesus and said, Bid that I be with you in paradise today. And we call him the good thief because he stole heaven at the last moment but that was not all mary promised to pray for him and he was a little boy whose mother 
Mary promised that she'll pray for him. And there you see the prayer of conversion takes many years. For some it happens straight away, but some it's a lifetime. But as long as Mary kept praying for him there at that last moment of his death, he asked God for his forgiveness and asked that he may be in paradise with him. And heaven was promised to him by Jesus. Our Lord would never refuse his mother anything. And so her prayers were heard. The good thief got to go to heaven. And St. Paul tells the young community in Philippi, they're a young, vibrant Christian community and they're having lots of problems, lots of struggles. And St. Paul, his message is very simple to them. He says, don't worry, pray for whatever you need. Pray. In our life, we spend so much of energy worrying about things it's more mental anguish to worry about something. At the end of it all, you can't fix it. And therefore, let's conserve our energy and channel it into prayer. And the greatest prayer that we can pray with the greatest person is Mary. After the Holy Mass, the Rosary, is a prayer that enables us to stay close to Jesus. What better help than to have the Blessed Mother praying for us in heaven, asking that we who are sinners will be given the grace to live a holy life. We say 53 times in the Rosary, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. We're not saying pray for us because we are saints. Pray for us because we are sinners. And pray for us now because we need our Lord's help to change our life, to convert, to be better in following Him. But also pray for us at the hour of our death. In these times, in these days, where it's so hard for people who are dying, their family is not around, some can't even get a priest to come and help them in their last hour of agony. But anyone who prays to Our Lady, I can assure you that she will send a priest for you. There was a woman in our nursing home who prayed the rosary faithfully every day, had a wonderful devotion to Mary. For several months, she had no visitors, no one could go and visit her at all. Not even her family, her daughters, nobody. She contracted the virus. She was dying. And no one knew when she was going to die. But the moment she contracted the virus, the daughters kept asking every day for almost 10 days, can we come, can we come, can we come? No, no, no was the answer. But on the last day, which no one knew it would be, the daughters were allowed to go. And they wanted me to go, and so they asked the nursing staff there if I was allowed to come. And for all these, I haven't been in the nursing for several months, permission was given for me to go. So I went in and gloved up and masked up and put everything on the protective gear, and went in, gave her the anointing of the sick, prayed prayers for the dying and I left and the two daughters continued to pray the rosary. They finished the rosary, she opened her eyes, she looked at them and she'd gone. Now this is the grace I'm talking about. When you pray the rosary, you have the assurances of the Heavenly Mother to be with you not only in this life to help you to live a holy life, but especially at the hour of your death which is the greatest hour of suffering. It could end up being a great hour of despair. But when you pray 53 times a day, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death, well, Mary will pray for you. And Mary makes a promise, she keeps it. So as we come to celebrate this 
this wonderful feast of our Lady of the Holy Rosary, Queen of the Holy Rosary. We ask this Queen and our Mother to pray for us that our lives will be converted, converted to following Christ. Now we are in a very difficult time in our life. You know, when there was war, there was still mass happening. Priests were going with, with the soldiers at the front line of battle. They would have mass and then they would go for the battle. When we had plagues, priests were able to go in and to serve and to offer the sacraments to the sick and the dying. In the underground church, for decades, there was holy mass offered for the faithful people. Now all are deprived of the sacrament. This is the great spiritual battle, where we are unable to receive the very grace from heaven, the Eucharist, to help us in our spiritual life. This is the great battle, where we are deprived of going to Mass. Whilst you can go to a pub and have alcohol, you cannot come to church and receive the spiritual gifts. You see, the time that we are in, that is why it's so essential that you pray the Rosary more fervently now than ever before. That when you pray the Rosary, meditate on Jesus' life. Don't just rattle it off. Because every time you meditate on Jesus' life, you receive the grace through Mary to come to love Jesus more and to live a more Christ-centered life. And Mary enables this to happen. So let us ask our Blessed Mother, through the Rosary, each day, to protect our families, to obtain for us the grace from heaven, to remain faithful to Jesus, so we will be fruitful in our life each day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.